Hey everybody, it's Safi and Marco. Dish out on movies, the only movie review show on YouTube to review movies in terms of food. It's just Marco here once again, and unfortunately, the movie that I wanted to review today is not out yet on YouTube. Uh, so I'm gonna have to do this list video, which I do. I do get kind of tired of list videos in January because. You know, we just get them done back to back to back, and it's just kind of, like, tiring. Because <laughs> it's like, you know, I have to edit them all, and I... So, basically, I have to re-listen to them all as well. Because, you know, I could do something where I rush through them to in order to edit it, but... Eh, I mean, I just kind of prefer to just listen to them, and so I get really sick of them, too. And this one <laughs> is going to be pretty massive. Because I am talking about my worst movies of 2023. But not just new movies in general, but new old movies. And for those of you who are new to the channel, we call these old movies because we don't know what else to call them. You know, <laughs> because these are movies that did not come out in 2023. So they came out in 2022 or beforehand, and uh, so we just label them all as quote-unquote old. So I have a shit ton of dishonorable mentions uh, this year. There were plenty of bad movies. There's even movies that I'm not going to talk about where I really could, because they were in like the mediocre section, but they were still pretty damn bad. Uh uh, but those, you know, there's just too many because you know what, guys? I watched 101 movies. So that's that's quite a few. I mean, even though that I was sick, as soon as I started getting better, I was like, okay, I'm going full speed ahead and I'm going to watch like a million movies. So, Jason Takes Manhattan was atrocious watching this movie was suffering it was absolutely torture it wouldn't end it wasn't even in manhattan most of the movie it was stupid dumb uh you've got mail wow that is the movie that came out and is quote my quote unquote birthday movie uh because it was the top box office movie on my birthday and wow i hate i hate this movie because movies like this they turned romantic comedies into chick flicks. And listen, there's nothing wrong with chick flicks if they're good. But romantic comedies, I feel, the majority of them, they should be aimed at everyone. And they sh But at a certain point, like around this time, I think they were really made into chick flicks. And they, they were kind of ruined. Because, like, it's a very niche audience. And they're very formulaic after this movie came out, I feel. And this movie in particular, it's terrible because the main character of the movie who gets the girl at the end, he's the villain of the movie. I mean, he is a douchebag. He's not likable at all. He's Tom Hanks. And it's like, this is terrible. Uh, and the love interest, she's dressed like a grandmother, even though she's like 30 years old. You know, like, her wardrobe was really bad, too. And then Witch House 3... Eh. I'm... Okay, I, w I won't mention any more movies that I don't... That I don't think I need to mention. Because Witch House 3 wasn't as bad. Uh, I mean, I knew it was going to be bad. Come on. It's Witch House 3. Uh, Prime Suspect, though. This is the movie uh, where... <laughs> it had a really good premise where there's this guy... And he's wrongfully accused of killing this uh, Girl Scout, this little girl, and being a serial killer of little girls. And then he's got to uh, prove that he's not, and he's got to find the bad guy. But then all of a sudden, halfway through the movie, uh, nothing happens for the rest of the movie. And it, the ending of this movie is so bad, I put it as the worst movie ending in, in history. Uh, where he just decides, fuck it, I'm going to give up in searching for the truth, and I'm just going to go back to my daily life as usual. And and then all of a sudden, they 
conveniently catch the bad guy while he uh, is on his first day of work of doing things, you know, just as, as normal as ever because sticks and stones break my bones, but words never hurt me. And I just thought that was so queer and the music was so bad and it was just, ugh. And what the, there was a huge plot hole in the movie too where, you know, the whole movie is based around how you know, this woman supposedly saw uh, the Girl Scout get into the car with the bad guy. Well, she saw the exact car of the bad guy. She thought that it was the main character. But it's so funny because there's a little detail that they never bring up the entire movie. So even though she's able to see the car in full detail, she knows exactly what kind of car it is. The, the make of the car is never brought up in the movie, and you, you see right off the bat that the main character, he drives a car that is nowhere near the same type of car. So, <laughs> like, isn't that stupid? Because they were also trying to make it seem like, oh, he could be the bad guy. And it's like, no, he couldn't. We've seen his car. <laughs> like, do you think we're stupid? And then also Tar. Tar, I, I am so mad that I watched this movie because some people said it was a masterpiece. Because when I watched it, I was like, this is one of the most boring things I've ever seen. Three hours of my life that I'll never get back. It was torture watching this movie. Uh, yeah. And next up is Jimmy P. Ugh. This movie could have been good. But the subject matter is... The way that it's treated, it's treated in a very dry way. Where they're not adding anything to it at all to make it interesting or to elevate it and make it into a movie experience. And so it's just a really miserable waste of time. Terrible movie. Next up is Don't Make Waves. Oh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> just mentioning this title makes me want to throw up because this movie is one of the most pointless movies I've ever seen. It was really, really bad. There's not, I mean, it's all about this guy who goes to California and then he just sleeps with chicks, but it's not really entertaining at all. And there's this whole second half of the movie where he schemes and scams uh, into like stealing away this guy's girl and it's not like you want him to steal her away. Like, you, you just think, like, this guy is a scumbag because, you, you know, uh, the, the guy that the girl was with, he was not, like, a bad guy. He was actually the most likable character in the whole movie. And, uh, it's, and then the movie ends where the, the main guy's house falls off a cliff, and it's like, yeah, this movie fell off a cliff. Uh, and next up is Index Zero. Oh, I want to put this movie at number one. That's how bad this movie is. They sucked all the color out of this movie, like almost on purpose. And it is like the most depressing, bleak, gross movie. Uh, it, you know, it's a foreign movie too. You know, foreign movies, a lot of the times, they can be really depressing because... Uh, you know, a lot of the times in, you know, Hollywood, they have, like, the happy endings. Well, they used to. Uh, but foreign movies, they're known a lot of the times for having awful endings. And Index Zero, I mean, ugh, ugh. Even though this movie doesn't have a quote-unquote bad ending, just the whole movie is like a kick in the stomach. And, ugh, I hate this movie so bad. I, I wish I could destroy this movie or, like, erase it from my memory. And then Nobody's Fool. Oh. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> this movie is extra offensive because this movie is, like, false advertising. Because the whole point of the movie is to, quote-unquote, uh, promote, like, the nice guy. And, like, instead of... It, because the whole movie's about this woman who uh, is dating uh, a catfish, 
uh, when she's, you know, shunning the nice guy. And and the, the movie's about, like, oh, she's got to get with him uh, and and not... Uh, and, you know, you know, get with him and stop, like, fucking around because, like, he's right there in front of her. But the thing is, is that the message of the movie is totally lost because instead of casting, like, a guy who actually looks like a real nice guy, they cast this guy who looks like a model. And so it totally, like, goes against the whole message of the movie and makes it, like, just kind of cringeworthy that, like, Oh yeah, it's the 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 pretty boy guy and the the pretty girl. You know, like it it, it just the whole message is not there at all because uh, he, a, a totally wrong casting and just so that completely destroyed the movie. And then next, and I didn't even finish it. That's how pissed off I was because she's a terrible character too. The main character, like she's really unlikable. Um, you know, she's very close to real life too and so it just i couldn't even stand it to finish it and also the end of the world oh this movie had lolita eating candy and that was like the only interesting thing about the whole movie <laughs> like the like there's literally nothing interesting in this whole movie it's just so bad and so boring and dull Except for the part where Lolita's eating candy. And, <laughs> I mean, that even that wasn't very interesting. Because I was like, oh no. This is probably what she had to eat for her meals this whole movie. Because there's a part where it's actually kind of cool. Like, they show these vintage vending machines. And she gets out some candy and some coffee. And I was like, you know, is this what she had to eat the whole movie? You know, like, instead of them actually giving her real food, they just gave her money for the vending machine. Like, it was kind of depressing, but, you know, and also just because, like, she's such a good actress, and, like, the fact that she's in this terrible movie is just kind of depressing. And then Children of the Corn 5, oh. This one was really, really bad. I mean, Children of the Corn sequels were really bad in general, but this one... It was it was so bad and it was so such a mess and uh I just I hated it. I I don't know what else to say. And then pass through. You know, usually Neil Breen movies, they can be really funny and good or they can be really bad and just not good at all. Pass through was one of the ones where I just think it's really really bad. It didn't make any sense at all and it just wasn't very entertaining. Like, the whole movie, I was just kind of waiting around for something entertaining to happen, you know? And then finally, this movie I wish could be at the number one worst movie of the year. Uh, Sherlock Holmes and the Voice of Terror. I Number one, I hate this movie because it's my first ever Basil Rathbone Sherlock movie, and it makes me not want to watch any of the other ones. Because of this movie is so bad. It's basically a World War II propaganda movie. And it's just, it's it's so dull. And, and even though it's only an hour, watching this movie was one of the most miserable experiences I had the entire year. That's how bad it was. The story was really lame. And there was nothing really that was good in the whole movie. And uh, it was a huge disappointment. Safi even admitted, too. She admitted that she shouldn't have chosen this movie because, you know, it was so bad. And it's known as, like, one of the worst ones ever. Uh, so, anyways, now let's move on to the top ten worst movies of the year. <sighs> Number ten is Children of the Corn 7, Revelation. This movie is perhaps the most boring movie of the series. And now, people have talked about this before. It's one thing for a movie to be bad, but it's another thing for a movie to be bad and boring. Because if, if a movie's bad, you at least want to have a good time watching it. You don't want to be bored. Well, this movie is so boring. It's all about this woman who, who goes to this 
nursing home to see her mother or something or her grandmother. I can't remember. And the grandmother used to be a part of the Children of the Corn or the mother. And then uh, it's just, it's this movie sucks. It just sucks the big one. Like, when I reviewed this movie, do you know what I gave it? I gave it, like, a vanilla milkshake. Because this movie is so bland, and it is so forgettable. There was no reason for this movie to be made. It, it's just one giant waste of time. And just for how boring it was, too. Like, it was so boring. Nothing happened in this movie, uh, except for, like, a rooftop barbecue. Like, <laughs> that's basically all that happened. And at number nine, oh god, this movie. Ugh, I just want to. I, I just want to destroy this movie so badly. Number nine is Stay Cool. Oh, even saying the title makes me upset. This movie was my first Winona Ryder movie of the year, and it was also my second to last because that's how bad this movie was. This movie was so bad. It's all about this main guy, and you look at this guy, and you think, ew. <laughs> you think, this guy should have been the guy and nobody's fool, because he looks like the nice guy. And it's all about him, and he wrote this book about high school, and he goes back to his hometown for the high school reunion, and he, he uh, falls in love again with the girl that he had a crush on in high school, but she ignored him. Uh, played by Winona Ryder. And that part of the movie, you think, okay, this is not bad. It's just kind of okay. But then all of a sudden, after he he gets with her and they make out, all of a sudden, she drops out of the movie and it becomes a completely different movie <laughs> where he... He's dating this, uh, or he's not dating her, but this gr this girl, Hillary Duff, she's in high school still. She is 18, though, so she's legal. Uh, and she asks him to go to prom with her, and she's in love with him and everything. And I just felt like, oh, my God. Because it, it even though she is legal, it's really creepy the way that, like, the whole movie, he's hanging out in her classroom with her. Like, why is he sitting in the classroom? Uh, because he's just there to give a speech. Like, wh why is he there? It's so strange. And then it literally just becomes about him going to the prom with her. And, like, I gotta be honest. If, if I was in the situation, I would have gone to prom with her, uh, too. Uh, because, you know, if she didn't have a date, you know, then that would have been the nice thing to do. Uh, but, like... It was so confusing of, like, wait a second, his love interest is supposed to be Winona Ryder's character, but for some reason, all of a sudden, in the, in the half of the movie, uh, she's not his love interest anymore, and I was like, what the fuck is this? Why? Why would you do that? Just, ooh, and so I didn't even finish the movie. Like, if Hilary Duff was his love interest, that would have been one thing, because, you know, they would have had to work up to that naturally and organically. But the fact that, like, he's got two love interests, and he looks like this, and the fact that it doesn't even make any sense, it just, it doesn't work together at all of, like, okay, it's, he's, got, he's got one love interest, you know, pick one or the other. You know, you can't have both. Unless you're, I don't know, uh, in a cult or something. Uh, but instead, he, it, it just, I, I hate that. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. It wasn't funny at all. The jokes were terrible. Definitely one of the worst movies I watched. And then speaking of worst movies, oh, number eight, we have Wonder Woman 84, a.k.a. the Zionist Wonder Woman 84, with the Zionist Gal Gadot. This is the worst superhero movie I've ever seen. It was that bad. Uh, the whole movie, she's raping a guy, and uh, <laughs> and it's treated as though it's like she she doesn't even know that it's wrong. Like it's really weird. Like she treats every man like shit, 
But then all of a sudden, when this one random man has her former lover's face transplanted onto him because that guy possessed him like his spirit or something, all of a sudden, she takes him as her sex slave and she rapes him the whole movie and gets his life in danger and the story is terrible. Cheetah is, is, is a joke you know, Kristen Wiig thinking she can act, and and then, uh, you know, somehow she's almost just as bad as uh, Zionist Wonder Woman, and then, like, Zionist Wonder Woman, she's such an unlikable bitch in this movie, like, at the end of the first movie, the, the whole message is like, you, you shouldn't be evil, you should spread love in the world, and then the whole movie and the second Wonder Woman, like, all she's doing is, like, hating on men, and, like, uh, you know, she's doing the opposite of spreading love. Like, she never spreads love at all the entire second movie. Like, she just does all this selfish shit for herself. And then the villain of this movie, Pedro Pascal's character, uh, he's supposedly the villain of the movie, but he's actually the most likable character in the entire movie. And he he's such a good actor that, like, I just wanted to watch the whole movie about him because he was the only character in the movie that I actually cared about. Like, I didn't care about selfish Zionist gal or her stupid selfish boyfriend's ghost who uh, came back and possessed another man so she could rape him. And uh, I didn't care about Cheetah and her stupid 1950s uh, problems, because they also did this weird thing where, like, Every man was evil in the movie, except for Chris Pine, uh, but also Chris Pine was evil too, basically, if you, you know, if you really think about it, and, uh, just, wow, this movie was atrocious, the music was terrible, uh, just everything about this movie, I can't believe I watched this movie, it was so long too, it was like three hours, and it's three hours I'll never get back. What a joke this movie is. Like, seriously. Like, I can't believe... And it's sad, too, because... You know, Patty Jenkins, she really sabotaged this movie series by uh, insisting that she write it, even though she's not a good writer. And, uh... So, you know, she just... She totally ruined it. And, uh... After the first movie was pretty good. Except for... Well, actually, the first movie was pretty flawed, too. You know, the more and more that you think about it. But uh, the second one was just that much worse. Like, the second one, this is one of the worst movies I've ever seen. Like, it, it was that bad. Now, number seven. Oh. Number seven is The Big Mouth. This is a Jerry Lewis vanity movie. Now, usually, I'm a big fan of, like, when someone writes a movie, directs it, and stars in it, because I feel like, even if, if you think that's really bad and you don't like it, you have to acknowledge that it is really hard to do that. I mean, I'm doing it currently, and it is very, very difficult to do that. And I look at it as more of a challenge. And, like, but the thing is, is that this movie is the one time where I'm like, wow, he really did star in this movie so that he could just, you know, do all the stuff that he did in the movie. And it just, it, it's a really, really bad movie. I mean, I just, I hesitate to even remember the movie. It's, it's so terrible. Watching this movie was like torture. It was like having my eyeballs pulled out with, like, I don't know, pliers, and then forcing me to eat them or something. Like, that's how bad this movie was. The story was terrible. Jerry Lewis, he's like, he, he looks like just this old boomer guy, and he thinks that he's cool, and he thinks that he's so funny, but he's just so bad. And uh, I just, I can't, I can't even begin to tell you how bad this movie is. Uh, number six is The Ramrodder. 
this, I don't even know if you could really call this a legitimate movie. It's a Western movie, and, oh, it's really, really kind of shitty. Because it's all about this cowboy guy, and he's married, and he ends up helping this Native American tribe get this land uh, it named as like a, a reservation for them, because, you know, he did so much work for them. And then how does this tribe pay him back? Well, they pay him back by falsely accusing him of raping and murdering one of their tribe. Uh, when the whole time that he could have been doing that, he was having relations with this uh, another girl from the tribe, who, by the way, none of the people in this movie are actually Native American, except for maybe one of them. Uh, <laughs> and so, you know, that's another thing. Uh, but I don't really mind that, because it's kind of funny and fun, the way that, like, you know, this is like a, almost like stepping into a time machine, and so it's kind of funny to look at uh, these people pretending to be Native American. They're just a bunch of hippies. So, but how it ends up is that the cowboy guy, he almost gets tortured to death. And then also, he has to go through this trial uh, to figure out if he actually had sex with that girl. And how does the chief pay him back after he finds out that he's not the bad guy? Oh, well, he pays him back by giving the girl that he had sex with to an abusive guy in the tribe. Uh, so then what happens is that the tribe is really mad, and some of them commit a gang rape revenge by raping a random white girl. Uh, so then what happens at the end of this movie is that this Native American tribe is forced off of their land and they're hunted down and probably killed because of that gang rape uh, that was committed uh, for no reason. So yeah, uh, <laughs> this movie is just so unhappy and it feels too almost like it's kind of like propaganda uh, because the Native American characters are so stupid and they're so... Uh, you know, just evil. So that's another thing. Very unhappy movie. Number five is Sexual Witchcraft. This movie is not even really a real movie. You know, they took a porno, which the porno wasn't very good either, and they took that and they cut all the sex scenes out of it, and then they released that as a movie. And it's basically a ripoff of Bewitched. It is very bad and poorly made. And obviously it's poorly made because it's not supposed to be a movie. It's supposed to be a porno. And they cut all the sex scenes out of it. And it's like, that is just like really, really pathetic that they did that. I don't know who ever thought that that was a good idea. The number four is Ocean's Eleven. This is probably one of the worst movies that I've ever seen. Uh, it, it's kind of a sexist movie, too. Uh, there's some cringeworthy stuff with that, where the main characters talk about how they, they'd like to take away women's voting rights, and, and I don't know. It was just really, really strange, this movie, because, like, you think it's going to be this, like, really intense and awesome heist movie, but instead, like, most of the movie is just kind of like a vanity project for these people. Like, you have scenes where Dean Martin sings for no reason for, like, ten plus minutes. Excuse me, sorry. You have scenes where Sammy Davis Jr. sings for, like, ten plus minutes. And Frank Sinatra singing for, like, ten plus minutes. And you're thinking, when is the actual heist going to happen? And then the heist happens, and and then by the end, like, they don't even get the money. The money gets burned. Uh, and so it's just like, this movie was just one of the biggest pieces of shit I've ever seen. It was so bad. It was such a, a mess of a movie. It was so uh, torturous to watch. Number three 
is Black Christmas 2019. Now, I will say that Emma Jean, the main actress, she is a really good actress, and so, you know, she really didn't deserve to be in this movie. But this movie was just, it was a giant feminazi propaganda movie. And it has nothing to do with the original. Uh, They made it PG-13, and I really hated this movie, to be honest. Like, it was so miserable. It was such a gross anti-men movie. And it's just, it's really disgusting that movies like this are allowed to be made. Because you know that if they made a movie that's like the opposite of this, that it would have never been allowed to have been made in the first place. Uh, Number two is Jingle All the Way 2. Now, there are things that I hate in this world. Lots of things that I hate in this world. And then there's Larry the Cable Guy. Larry the Cable Guy is probably one of the top things that I hate of all time. Larry the Cable Guy is so unfunny... He is so untalented. I hate everything about him. And uh, this movie is just... It's the biggest piece of shit I've ever seen. Uh, It's poorly made. There's like no attempt to make like an actual movie. If you thought the first one was bad... Well, get ready. Because this one is even worse. And uh, this one is so stupid. The whole plot of like... He, he, uh, this other guy steals all, the, or he buys all the toys in town so that no child in town can have a toy for Christmas. And then at the end of the movie, he just gives them away like that. What a stupid piece of crap. They're just trying to rip off the Grinch there. And Larry the Cable Guy, he's just so just, I hate watching anything with that untalented piece of shit in it because, I mean, he honestly, like, I hate feminazis. But Larry the Cable Guy to me is worse than Feminazis because Larry the Cable Guy, he's a joke. Uh, He doesn't even talk like that in real life. You know, that's a fake made up thing that he does. And just, wow, what what a piece of shit. But my number one worst movie of the year is actually a movie that is so obscure that it's not even on Letterboxd. And that movie is A Strange Woman Passed By. This is the movie that we watched for uh, the Greek day of the year, where we get Greek food, and then we find a random Greek movie to watch. And I just picked this movie out at random, and it ended up being basically like a soft remake of Don't Make Waves, but with a woman as the lead instead of a man. And I just, I hardly knew what was going on because there were no subtitles. Uh, It was kind of like that scene in Home Alone where the characters were watching uh, the classic movie and it was in French and there was no subtitles. Like, that's what this was like. It was so uh, bad. Nothing really happens in this movie at all. Like, there's no point to it. Like, I think, like, Vacation movies, like movies where people go on vacation, they can either be really, really good, but when they're bad, they're really, really bad. And this movie in particular is really, really bad. Uh, I just, I don't, I, I can barely remember what happens, but none of it made sense, and all of it sucked, and it was definitely the worst movie of the year. Just because it felt like, you know, wouldn't it be nice to watch, like, a good Greek movie? Like, I did ask a Greek person who lives in Greece. I asked her, like, years ago, in, like, 2019 or 2020. I asked her, what what's the best Greek horror movies to watch? And, and she couldn't even give me an answer. She said that in, in Greece they don't even make horror films at all they don't really make anything good and I was like that's terrible like this is a person who's lived in Greece her whole life and she can't even give me one single good Greek horror movie 
or Greek movie anything to watch. And I thought, that's that's really telling. That's bad. That's really bad. Like, I know the Greek women have hairy armpits, but, like, can't there be some good Greek movies? <laughs> like, I would really like a Greek movie that's good. And so my mission, one of my missions for 2024 is that when we watch our Greek movie, that it will be good. Because the last one that we watched was that Dracolos and Sia, which was, ta- it, it was pretty bad, but it wasn't the worst thing of the year. But then the one last year was really, really bad. There was no point to it at all. And it wasn't funny or fun or anything. So anyways, please like this video and comment and tell us, tell me what are some of the worst older movies you watched of the year. Uh, and then please subscribe to our channel if you'd like to see more honest videos like this. Goodbye everybody, well, see you soon. currently in Greece. We don't have, we don't make horror films or something.